Hey guys, welcome back to Surveying with Robert. So, had some guys on Facebook hit me up about um, Kogo routines, about rotating um, points in a file using Trimble Access. So, I know the Kogo routines in Trimble Access can be a little kind of um, different, if you, especially if you're used to Survey Pro. But I tell you what, I'm going to show you how to do that today. Um, we're going to load up some points, and I'm going to put this together for you, and I'm going to show you how to rotate. It's really a lot easier than you think. So. I'll tell you what, mm. let's do this. Let me get this set up. You guys watch this and we'll get after it. Okay, I've got everything set up, you ready to go? So you guys check this out. So what we're gonna do is I've already created a job, I just called it rotate. So we're gonna go into jobs, we're gonna go to import export, I'm going to import fixed format, I'm going to go find rotate, accept. Okay, so I should have these points in here. Now, if we go back to jobs, we go back to properties job and look, feature library, I don't have anything. Let me show you a little trick real quick. So if I go into map, you can see, you can see my points in map. So there's all my points. But watch what happens if you use a feature library. So if I go to properties of job, uh, feature library, I say training, which is the one I'm using. I'm going to say accept. Now look, now we've got lines in here. So to me, this is huge because especially when I'm rotating points and stuff like that, I, I like to see what's going on. I don't like to just rotate a big group of points and not know that everything really rotated. So this probably would be my first suggestion to you because I'm not big on rotating points out in the field. I'd rather do it in the office, but I realize sometimes you just don't have a choice. Here's what we're going to do. And this is actually rotating points is a whole lot easier than you think. So if I go into menu, Kogo, I go to transformations and I'm going to say rotate points. So you have different options here, rotate, scale, and translate. Um, rotate's obviously what we're going to do. Scale would be like, I want to adjust the scale. I'm not exactly sure why you'd ever want to do that. And translate is really handy. Like if you're staking subgrade and the contractor comes up and say, Hey, I want to do base course. You can actually translate all the points up like six inches for base course if you need to. So let's stick with rotate. So here we go. So when you see the screen it gets a little intimidating because chances are what you guys typically are seeing is this. You're seeing an origin point and a rotation. And you're like, I don't know what, I've got to get out and calculate the angle and all this other stuff. And this is just crazy. This is hard. This is difficult. It's an easier way to do it. Now I'm going to tell you this. Older versions of Access, this is pretty much all you have. The newer versions, and I don't remember which version it was. All I can tell you is a newer version. Um, they changed this. Uh, they realized that this was an issue. So check this out. If you go out here to rotation, there's these three little dots with this arrow on the side. If I click on that and I say two azimuths, now look what happens. I have azimuth one and azimuth two. So we know our origin point is point number one. That's the point that um, in our little scenario, we're gonna say that's the point that we found. And what we're, what we're saying is, let me go back to the map real quick. What we're saying is, is here at point number one, we found that iron pin. So then if you keyed in all the other corners and you put that in, so now you're looking for them. So typically we might go ahead and put in point number one. We'll put the bearing on the plat. We'll go up here and see if we can find number two. So based on that bearing and distance. So let's say that we found point number two, but we shot it, stored it as number five. Now what I want to do is I'm going to rotate this whole thing to match up to point number five over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my transformations back to here. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to say two azimuths, but I'm going to use the calculator. This is the part that I think people miss. So I'm going to go to the calculator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say azimuth. So now look what happens uh, between two points. You have some other options in here. What we're going to use today is between two points. 
So if I say from point number one to point number two, I want to know what that azimuth is. I say accept, there it is. I say accept, so now it's populated in here. So now azimuth number two, that's what I want to, this is where I'm rotating from, this is where I'm rotating to. So number two, same thing, two azimuths. I'm gonna come down here to calculator. I'm just gonna clear out what I had. I'm gonna say azimuth again, and this time I'm gonna go between point number one, and I'm gonna go to point number five. And I say enter and accept. So it gives me that, I say accept, there's that bearing. So now then, I've got both bearings in here. I've got the bearing from uh, one to two, and then from one to five. And that second one is one I'm rotating to. Okay, so let's hit next. Now right here it says, um, this is basically what it's asking you, is what points do I want to rotate? So I'm gonna say add, and I'm gonna say selection from the job because I know that oh, I just want to go from one to four are the points I want to rotate. So one, two, three, and four, I want to rotate those to where it matches up with line one to five. So now we're going to say enter, add. There's the four points that I just chose. You'll note my uh, uh, command codes on here for drawing that line work. I say accept, apply the defined transformation. Yes, four points were transformed. There you go. It's rotated all of them to fit that. And we can, uh, we can easily see that everything is rotated that way. So... I hope this helps uh, get you pointed in the right direction. Uh, the Kogo routines and access really aren't that difficult. They're just different than what you're used to. Pretty much everything's in there. I've got a few other things that I'm looking at that some guys have asked me for that I'm gonna try to put together. So uh, it's kind of a slow process. Uh, this is uh, Monday morning and I should be getting in a truck and heading to Mississippi right now and I'm building you this video. So I'm just kind of give you an idea how my life works. So anyways, guys, be safe, uh, like and subscribe. If you subscribe, you get notified every time that I post a new video. And if you like, that tells me what you guys enjoy. Um, if you like it, then I know that I'm headed down the right path. So help me out with that, would you? So anyways, if you guys have got any questions, just give me a, give me a yell, give me a shout. And as always, be safe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.